Good morning. Can you hear me? Absolutely clearly. Absolutely. So uh, thank God I have a con. Thought about. So how are you this morning, Gaurav? Very good, very good. A little Great. cold. I'm at the airport. Oh, at the airport. Where are you up to? I'm off to the northeast to Arunachal Pradesh. Great, 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 great. So Arunachal as a place, I think it's like an awesome place. I mean, it, I think the landscape there is beautiful. It's cold there, you know, as compared to Delhi right now. So are you like all packed up with all your sweaters and jackets? Uh, yeah, it's it's actually it's not cold there. The landscape is beautiful. And the landscape okay. is primarily beautiful because वहाँ पे ना इंसान पहुँचे नहीं हैं अभी। That actually sets the theme for our conversation today. Absolutely. इंसान पहुँचे नहीं हैं। That means it's all about not building and not encroaching upon nature. So absolutely. what are your views on this, Gaurav? Uh, my views are absolute and how does one put it? Unequivocal. That <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, essentially that uh, uh, we should try and cap that as much as possible and arunachal very quickly is going in the direction of you know any other city in india okay uh, trying to build trying to build a lot and uh, it's not uh, it's not particularly the kind of place where uh, the uh, there's an industry in terms of building materials they have to get everything from the planes mm-hmm. but uh, yeah that's that's the challenge but they're still doing it Okay, okay, okay. So you know, for all the listeners, Gaurav, would you introduce yourself and then I'll introduce myself too? Okay, just give me a moment, one second, yeah. For all the viewers, there is no pause button in this recording. So you know, uh, I am Raja Singh. I am an architect by profession, and I am, uh, you know, doing my. Mo- doctorate in architecture working in the area of infection control and also working in a security standards organization and you know uh, i have a lot of interest in green in you know making sustainable buildings and also talking about sustainability and you know with me is gorov shori gorov are you there yes. back again with us absolutely so, so we just been yourself. We've just been told that we need to move uh, our check in gate has changed from gate 32b to across to the other side to gate 42c oh <laughs> now <laughs> to bolt and the boarding time is in another 9 minutes but that's oh. all right we can enjoy the walk yeah yeah so yes absolutely so so thank you so much for uh, for filling the gap there raja singh <laughs> that's beautifully done uh, i am uh, also unfortunately an architect by qualification I don't enjoy green buildings and building green buildings <laughs> like Raja Singh has. I think that that's uh, that's you know one of the excuses that uh, humanity has created to allow us to continue doing things as usual. Mm-hmm. So you know it's been 16 years now that I've been working building this... green buildings. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, a bit of both actually. Uh, I've been. uh helping uh, design green buildings but also not uh, holding back in letting people know the absolute damage that it does uh-uh. but i think the most exciting and enthralling part of what i do uh-uh. is uh, just following what uh, the late great mohandas karamchand gandhi said that if you want long term change then work with children uh-huh. so uh, being able to contribute to uh our alma mater where you and i are currently the school of planning and architecture in delhi yes and uh, that too working with students in architecture to tell them that the future is not building okay i think that is uh, uh, the most confronting the most challenging part as well because obviously the students are like kya baat kar rahe ho matlab career to isi mein <laughs> and that's so scandalizing i mean you first <laughs> exactly. tell them 5 years that you have to build and then you suddenly tell them you know building is not great so i mean what is the answer yeah. to this problem goro so quite frankly it's uh, it is telling the truth to yourself <laughs> another journey that we have uh, commonly been you know part of the landmark one yeah uh, just learning to soul search learning to answer the basic questions for yourself because i feel that to such an extent uh, the career choices that students make are so largely driven by comparison mm well <laughs> aren't our lives also driven by comparison but 
but really being driven uh, sorry just a moment uh, raja you'll have to uh, give me a don't worry know? about it so you know so what god now i see a vistara about... person who is now announcing something else i'm so, sorry same gate same gate again same gate okay thank you so much great so, so now a lot of morning walk a lot of morning walk for you got up yeah that too in terminal terminal 3 which is like morning walk central <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. They have these travelators, you know, in the middle, and you know. Yeah, and mostly I try not to take them, so. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So I yeah. really enjoy the morning walk. Plus, you know, if you would would have been in one of the travelators, there will be a lot of sound coming yeah. in our yeah. recording. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Talking so, about uh, scandals. Talking about scandals. That yeah, how yeah. is so it so I, scandalizing? I was, I was there's, there's so much comparison. There is so much. Uh, uh what are my peers doing how can i set myself apart in the market and that stands in high contrast with the real question that we need to ask what's needed and required where mother nature is okay or, or what's needed and required where the future generations health is or for or what's needed and required to naturally deal with a, a problem like the coronavirus and the future pandemics that people are now predicting are going to keep coming okay right so i think that we're not asking the questions from that perspective the questions mostly are how can i secure a job for myself okay right so so i think it's not difficult like i used to initially feel that it's very difficult to uh, to pose this very scandalous point of view to the young people Okay. And I might experience a lot of backlash from them, but that's not what happened. Okay. And another thing that uh, works, of course, is uh, numbers. You know, like just generating numbers, doing the calculations. For example, simple calculations on how much is the carbon emission intensity of a new building, and and the students can see for themselves that oh my God, we are not going down the right path, right? but how does this career put table you know food on the table for all the students uh so i think food on the table is a different uh conversation altogether and it doesn't depend entirely on you know i think the simplest and the most powerful case in point that one can take is you and i okay we are we are architects by qualification uh, but we don't build buildings you went into academics uh, and you did such amazing and I, i really hope that you share that as well the work that you did in um, uh in natural ventilation in fire yes and uh, i can now see the staff walking away are we checking in for this gate excuse me oh even you are not sure oh okay <laughs> i'm i'm speaking to the vistara staff here and they're telling me that they are not sure where we are logging <laughs> so, <laughs> excited may you live in exciting times yes absolutely yes so uh, so you so you did such exciting work in in uh, in uh, natural ventilation fire control which has now gone also into uh, control of infections and absolutely. you know natural ventilation design of buildings so much the hot current topic so i think it's about keeping your eyes and ears open yes and uh, then exploring where you can contribute to human beings absolutely And I don't think that uh, sir aircraft yes, sir. park hoga abhi uh-huh. thodi der mein uh-huh. yahan se boarding karenge UK se acha yahi se karenge na mm-hmm. theek hai thank you so uh, yeah so so it's it's uh, it's it's so interesting that uh, I think that the contribution the ability to contribute happens and it shows up at so many different places and uh, it is about learning to listen it's le- it's really about learning to constantly look at and engage at what what do people require like i i just wanted to take this anecdotal example uh like raja singh what you did when you got uh, tested corona positive and then you you wanted to share with people what is the experience how can i deal with this uh, in an effective way without getting frazzled without getting panicked out and and you went on to youtube you you you, you know you you did yeah. all that and and i think i think that was that was that is service to humanity absolutely that now how did that happen that happened because you cared <laughs> actually it was more of that i was in a position that god save me you know i'll do good work from now on <laughs> yeah and and, and, and and that's really interesting right like now yeah. notice notice what you did as yeah. soon as you did it that you will do good work from now on you decided to make a difference to other people absolutely absolutely and you know thank right. god to all the 
doctors who were kind enough to give me interviews and tell me information and you know you know at the time when i was doing this work there were very few channels but today after like 2 months you know every doctor is online and talking so that created a ripple effect for example the doctor yeah. i interviewed uh, hmm. from a big gynae hospital in chandigarh now hmm. their hospital have their own channel and they put two wow. videos every day wow <laughs> so so the, the now let's point... see can you see that i mean I, that's beautiful the example <laughs> that you said is self illustrative that 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 is where people need to stand absolutely 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 now now a, a very very interesting parallel question that is very closely connected to the first question that you asked is how do i put food on my plate but that question is very context specific if mm-hmm. i say how do i put food on my plate in delhi yeah i'm in trouble oh, absolutely because yes. to get food from the source to your plate takes like so many kilometers mm mm-hmm. mm right and yeah. and uh, and and obviously you have to pay for those kilometers yes right but as soon as i look at the demographic of a, a university like the school of planning and architecture where so many of the students are from villages they're from small towns i think our prime responsibility becomes giving them the confidence to be able to uh, do whatever they want to do in life from their villages without migrating out without thinking that you know uh, the city is better than the village it's not let's let's face it right yeah and uh, if they can do that then food on my plate uh, becomes a very very different question the amount of expenditure that i need to incur on a monthly basis becomes very very minimal you know yeah but god of you know right now talking about the medical facilities for example how would you answer this question like all these people in tier 2 tier 3 and in remote villages and in other villages they do not have the medical facilities that we have in delhi i mean of course that's also a question you know the thing that can be challenged whether we also in delhi have the medical facilities that we require <laughs> but yeah but but at the same time you know they have this thing in their mind that we do not have hospitals like delhi people do have so wouldn't they then migrate to delhi Uh, so so that's a very interesting question raja and and i think that it works both ways uh, number one i will not undermine the efforts that the government has made in terms of primary health care centers in terms of the asha employees that they've created at the grassroots level to take care of people and to make sure that the infrastructure is strong uh, with whatever facilities the village people need at their level right okay. now what is also very interesting is how does the human psyche work when i know that i don't have a very high end facility next to my house i need to i take requisite actions to make sure that my health is in tip top shape because i can't mess up like i the stakes are too high yeah you know so i think that there is that fear psychosis there is that uh, uh i you can't also undermine the sorry you'll have to deal with the no- announcements at the back huh? it's perfect it's perfect but uh, but um, I, one also then realizes that when you go to villages and you interact with people and i'm not talking about villages where you know industries have contaminated groundwater with arsenic that's not what i'm talking about but the average agricultural uh, village people tend to live fairly healthy lives clean air very active physically in terms of engaging with the day to day activities being outside engaging with their society people as well so i think that there is a, 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 it reminds me of that documentary if you remember on ikigai which had come on youtube you know where uh, these done these people in the us had done research on where do people live the longest and they identified three three places where the people have the longest lives mm-hmm. and they realized that in all these places what kept those people having long lives were not hospitals okay it was not healthcare centers it was the fact that these people were very actively engaged socially and they had some sort of a purpose like you know in one community people were really crazy about gardening and another community people were really crazy about hanging out with their friends like in japan so they had examples that had nothing to do with healthcare facilities and longevity or healthcare ka koi connection hi nahi tha you know acha sahi hai so i think uh, it is it is very revealing when when you and i study the standards and we say that the national uh, uh, nabh standards the national accreditation board for healthcare and hospitals uh, the, the national building code says that you need three beds 
for every 1000 of the population of india now mm-hmm. i think that's that's a very good um, a statistic to go by which basically means that you don't have to worry so much about health because out of 1000 people three people will need beds so so it's all about holistic care and yeah, it's about it, wellness it's not exactly. about exactly it's not about disease curing it's about keeping people healthy yeah and 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 i think that what is very important is like what you're doing in terms of conversations in terms of speaking, in terms of allowing platforms where there is social interaction of people mm-hmm. and not the isolation that people experience in cities. They are more and more alone, they are more and more alone, and then they are psychosomatic diseases. So I think it's more of approaching it from a holistic perspective. What do you think? I think, Gaurav, you are a busker. And you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that. That is also, by the way, the name of this podcast. So make sure all of you, you know, listen to this podcast every single day. Ask your friends to listen to this podcast, which is called Baskar Yar. How do you like this name, Gaurav? I love it. I love it, Raja Singh. It's absolutely fabulous. And I have to and I have to acknowledge you for this, for coming up with the name. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you, everybody, for listening today. And, you know, it's amazing. So see you in the next Baskar Yar episode. See you guys. Bye. Bye.